Hello again and welcome back to another one. And today we have a couple of topics to cover from one that shows Steve Miller react to Eminem's Houdini after Eminem sampled his song Abracadabra from the 80s and he was blown away by how Houdini performed in 2024 and he also revealed just how much the industry changed using a specific example that provided a whole lot of context about why everyone in the industry were in panic mode going into the digital age of music and we'll expand on this in a bit. Today we also have one that shows Joe Budden go scorched earth on rapper Young Miami for laughing at him after it took over 20 years for his biggest single Pump It Up to go gold in the United States. And to be honest, Joe Budden went off for nearly 10 whole minutes in response to Young Miami dropping laughing emojis to his milestone video. She clearly struck a nerve. But as you'd see, Joe Budden was actually spitting. The problem is, he was spitting at the wrong target and we'll expand on why in a bit. And speaking on Kendrick Lamar, we got a scoop from Drake's unofficial spokesperson that Kendrick Lamar is planning to drop some heat, although he also pointed out that he isn't aware of the heat in question, be it a new diss song or an entire new album and we'll expand on this in a bit. And before we dive in, Juvenile give a shout out to Eminem again in response to the headline about Eminem sampling Ha on the song Road Rage. He reacted on Twitter with shout out at Eminem for using Ha. And speaking on Juvenile, he recently got into it with American Airlines and you wouldn't believe what happened as apparently they tried to move him from first class to coach. Like out of everyone, he was singled out. Check out a snippet of how it went. Repercussions to this. Because I'm going to get off the plane. And I'm going to get off the plane. I'm not going to let y'all dis disrespect me like that. I'm not going to let y'all choose me out of all the people on the plane and disrespect me. So I'm going to get off the plane. No, no, no. I'm going to get off the plane. Come on. You ain't going to disrespect me. You make sure you get out your stuff, baby. Shit kind of funny to me. I ain't going to lie. They took your seat but didn't take my seat. I don't, I, I don't understand. Out of all the people on the plane, y'all pick a celebrity. Out of all the people on the plane, you pick me. You, you, like you don't know who I am. I don't want to hear that shit. Don't keep saying you sorry. Don't keep saying you sorry. Don't keep saying you sorry. I don't want to hear that. You sorry. You sorry you wouldn't pick me out of all the fucking people on the plane. Seriously. I've never heard of nothing like this before because you downgraded. You taking his seat. I told you I can't stand them American fucking airlines. This shit trash anyway. I, I fly Delta, man. I don't fly this shit anyway. I'll jets. Fly this trash ass shit anyway. Get some TVs on these motherfuckers. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and the motherfuckers that uh, took me out of first class on my day and downgraded me. And say it with me, even though you don't live in the United States, F American Airlines, we're flying Delta from now on. But on a serious note, he handled that with grace. And moving on, DJ Academics recently spilled some tea when it comes to what to expect from Kendrick Lamar real soon. Check out a snippet from his live stream. By the way, why did I get news that 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 Kendrick is coming? I, I've, I've I've gotten some sources that tell me Kendrick. Not I I don't think it's on some dish shit, but I've I've heard that you know Kendrick is loading up. Now I don't know if that means an album. I don't know if he's finally gonna start giving out the handouts of features that he probably promised them niggas who was who were crip walking and blood walking on that stage. I don't know if it's just gonna be a Lucy. Maybe it's that track that was on the beginning of the Not Like Us video. But I was told Kendrick is coming. So, and pause on that, by the way. That sounds wild if you listen to it in the vacuum. Okay. And to be fair, there's been signs that show Kendrick Lamar isn't about to go on another five-year hiatus. And boy, we still got Drake fans out here claiming a W. Drake is the booyah man. He's the only rapper who can lure Kendrick into releasing music when he's feeling lazy. But on a serious note, there's already a conversation being had about how Kendrick Lamar has ja rolled Drake just like 50 Cent did in the early 2000s when he made it cool to clown Ja Rule's music. And there's a conversation that Kendrick has done the same to Drake. And we even got to hear Academic's thoughts on this as he believes that on the casual side of things, this may actually be true. Kendrick has managed this. Check out a snippet. They're like, yo, it feels like Ja Rule after 50 torture. And that's when I realized, I said, a lot of the neutrals, when they hear Drake's music now, they're hearing it with a filter. 
What does that mean? If Drake had dropped six songs prior to his battle with Kendrick Lamar, I believe those same fans would be like, yo, Drake is sparking. He can't, yo, the nigga still, he always got some shit. And I'm, I'm just trying to show you that the narrative and perception that goes into uh, um, after a battle or whatever, you know, this rap shit's about what's cool. This is why Future's lasted so long. No matter how old Future is, no matter what he does, we just look at him as the epitome of cool. Nobody mentions his age. Nobody men none, none of the shit that people use for other people they use on Future, he's cool. So what I realize now is like, I do think the battle affected certain neutrals and even certain women to a certain extent to now look at Drake's music to say, ah, eh, it don't hit the same. Why? Because at this moment, I think they don't look at Drake as cool anymore because of the battle. I'm looking at people like kind of talking about these tracks and I'm like, when I see somebody be like, no, this shit just don't hit the same anymore. I'm like, oh, okay, so, so you're indoctrinated by the narrative. Regardless, they're pretty decent songs. They're pretty decent or good songs. But do you agree that from the neutral standpoint, Drake has been jarred as it stands right now? And moving on, if you recall, we covered it a few days ago when City Girls rapper Young Miami dropped laughing emojis in response to Joe Budden's first ever certification in the United States. And Joe Budden fired back at her in a recent episode on his podcast, although he tried to play it off, but clearly it got personal, although he's not wrong with his take as you'd see. But there's a twist in this, but first check out the snippet. I'm a little slow. I'm the last to know that there are a few of you out there that are laughing at that gesture. And I want to be clear, everybody can laugh. There's absolutely nothing you could say to make me think that LL Cool J bringing me my pump it up gold plaque to my triple, triple platinum or whatever quadruple platinum podcast is an L. I want to be clear. I like young, young Miami. I do. I want to be honest here. I'm not going to personally attack her because she is allowed to laugh. Thing about laughter, I think that she will soon realize is it's also a luxury she's had a stressful year i am a little surprised that she has found enough time to laugh at anything if complex were to do a list of where all the female rappers rate carisha you would be last on the list you would be drop dead last on that list every female out there wiping you down right now but carisha was the very last person i expected to do this. Carisha, not only may you be dropped from your label right now, but you are not allowed to put music out. There's nothing happening. I want to remind you that today I hear Pump It Up more than I hear you. Don't cap. Let's not cap about that. Let's not put, that's not flex for the ground. Uh oh. C A P. So while you go on these social media rants and say that you were nine years old with Pump It Up dropped and now you're 30. You should be cautious of that because your record label today is saying to you that they're not seeing any growth. Self-admittedly, the only talent that you have possessed in recent years is providing emotion. You are the worst female rapper out there currently, and you don't write your own shit. Now, apart from Joe Budden capping about hearing Pump It Up, he was right for the most part. Young Miami is a bottom tier rapper when it comes to skills. However, there are many artists who got into hip hop not to be the best rapper. They just wanted to get to the bag. And in my opinion, based on observation, Young Miami is one of them. So going off about how she's the worst rapper doesn't sting. If that was never the goal for these kind of rappers, it was more along the lines of clout, wealth and fame. And you could argue that she has even overachieved based on her talent. And mind you, she was reportedly dating Brother Love for a while. So Joe Budden's words would have stung more if it was directed at a rapper who actually cared about hip hop and making music. And of course, Joe was called out for adding some cap 
when he was spitting. Don't nobody here pump it up. Y'all stop lying. LOL. And boy, we got TikTokers breaking down why City Girls is actually more impactful than Joe Budden, even though they can't rap. 20 years. It's been 20 years and he got hit with the gold plaque for Pump It Up. So Young Miami caught a wind of this video and started laughing because realistically, the City Girls got five plaques on their own. We're talking just off of them. They got three platinum, two gold. And then I see some people pushing back. Well, that just it don't matter because the, uh, the gold don't solidify how big of a song Pump It Up was. But I can argue that Pump It Up don't have a much cultural impact as the City Girls. We're talking about women's dating behavior. The word is almost like, what is it, an adjective or a noun or a verb? I don't know. I ain't great with English, so I don't know which one it is, but it is one of those things. So we can kind of argue, has the City Girls had more impact? We're talking about just off of music. We're not talking about podcasts. And Joe Button is absolutely, you could argue, top one or two podcasts of all times. But we're talking about just straight music. Has the City Girls had a bigger rap career than Joe Button? If we just going off in of numbers alone, we're not talking about skill. I can lean towards the city girls have had more impact on their music than he did on damn certainly an opinion that will raise eyebrows but i maintain the notion that young miami didn't get into this to become a decent rapper rap was more of a means to an end and when you look at it like that she overachieved seeing as we even got court documents reportedly naming her as one of brother love's sex workers at one point but this is just my opinion what are your thoughts and moving on steve miller who got sampled on eminem's houdini recently had a chat with the San Diego Union Tribune and he was asked about how the Eminem song happened and we got to find out some interesting things about this including a peek into how the transition in the industry happened into the digital age as a legendary legacy artist at that time and it started with this question when you play abracadabra do you tell the audience about Eminem sampling it for his song Houdini and he responded yeah I tell a little story about putting the song together we vamp a bit and then go into it I feel really great that Eminem used Abracadabra, it is a good use of it. And after he was asked, how did that come about, he expanded. He called that he'd like to use Abracadabra. He said, I've written a bunch of verses and we've done a track, I'll send it to you. I listened to it, called him back and said, yeah, that's fine, man, it is great. And if you want, I'll send you the stems, individual audio files. So I sent him my actual recorded stems for Abracadabra so he could work with them. Then I got a lesson about what social media has done in the record business. When I put out Abracadabra in 1982, it became the number one record in the world and that took about 12 months. With Eminem, two days after we signed our agreement, he released Houdini at 12.01 a.m. on a Friday. Within 30 minutes, 60,000 people had watched the video on YouTube. By 10 a.m. it was 3 million. Nearly 50 million people streamed it worldwide in just the first week. I'd never seen anything like that. It was crazy, just instantly. So that was a real lesson and Eminem was very cool. I put out a little release saying I appreciated that it was legit. It feels good that a whole other group of people are listening to my music through Eminem and digging it. And in this same interview, we got a glimpse from Steve Miller's personal experience when music moved into the digital age. And I'm sure some of you remember the documentary produced by Eminem about how music got free. Well, check out an excerpt from Steve Miller's interview. It goes, Napster showed up and my record sales. I had been selling like a million and a half records a year of my back catalog. And in about 18 months after Napster appeared, my sales went down to like 110,000 copies a year. Hey, boy, ain't no f***ing way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. It really was a serious challenge, a legal challenge to intellectual property rights. A few days ago, we heard from Method Man that since the transition from digital downloads and physicals to streaming, he's yet to receive a check from streaming platforms. But boy, going from 1.5 million in a year to less than 10% of those sales in 18 months, wow, shows that these music industry changes are brutal for those caught in the transition period. But over to you guys, share your thoughts below, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.